Hello everyone, this is Lab S1, Shear Force and Bending Moment, done by Group 13. What is shear force and bending moment? The shear force at any point along the beam is a force that tends to produce a sliding failure on a material along a plane that is parallel to the direction of force. The bending moment is the moment induced in a structural element such as beam when an external force or moment is applied to the element causing the element to bend. Note that for a simply supported beam, the bending moment at the end will always be zero. The objective of this experiment is to study the shear force and bending moment at the particular section which is section XX and compare with the theoretical calculation. For the first experiment is the shear force at section XX was due to variation of load and variation of applied load. This is point A, point B, point C and point D. And point D also the section XX. Before we start our experiment, we have to make sure the digital force is zero. First, we place 100 gram of load between the point A and point B and the shear force at point D has been measured and next we increase the load to 200 gram and 300 gram the shear force at point D is measured we repeat all the experiment by replacing the load from point AB to point BD and point BC and the data is measured. Next, we plot from the data we obtain, we can plot the two graphs. The first graph is shear force at section SX versus variation of load at from position A. And the second graph is shear force at section XX versus applied load. The second experiment which is positive and negative shear force. There is three cases in this experiment, which is the load between point A, B, point B, D, and point D and C. First, for the first case and third case, which will give us positive shear force. And for the second case, which will give us negative shear force. So for this experiment, with this one, we will use it to represent the rod. We have points A, B, D, and C. Where B, we have a spike pivot, and on C, we have a rolled pivot. We will use these in order to represent the digital forces. At first, we will set them at zero. Then, we will place them between B and D at a uniform distance of 60 millimeters between each other like this then we will measure the shear and the value of shear force at point D the P value we will use will be 200 grams then we will repeat it by 4 P values P will remain the same and they will all have a uniform distance of 60 millimeters uh, between each other then the experiment will be repeated with the three P forces between A and B with a uniform distance of 40 millimeters between each other. Then we compare the values of the shear force with the theoretical values of the shear force in each experiment. So for this experiment, we will assume that this is the rod the, uh, for the experiment and we have points A, B, D and C, where at B we have a spike pivot and on C we have the rounded pivot. We will use, we will be using this for uh, to represent the digital pivot, which is at first set to zero. And the low P will be placed like this, 60 millimeters from point B. Then the value of shear force at D will, will be measured. P that will be used for the experiment will be 200 grams. The experiment will then be repeated 
by moving the, the force of P to 120 millimeters from point B. The force P will remain the same of 200 grams. This, the experiment will then be repeated with a distance of 180 millimeters from point B. P remains constant. Then the experiment will be repeated once again with a distance of 240 millimeters from point B. The force P will remain uh, constant. Then the experiment will again be repeated, but instead of only one, there will be two more P forces between B and D. They will have a constant distance of uh, 60 millimeters between each other. P will be the same 200 grams. Then the experiment will be repeated with four P forces instead of three. P will remain constant and there will be a constant distance between them of 60 millimeters. From experiment one, based on graph one, shear force versus load magnitude, it can be seen that the shear force is linearly proportional to the load magnitude. All cases plotted shown that the theoretical and experimental shear force value have relatively small differences. As for the graph of shear force versus load positions, which is graph 2, we can also see that from the plotted value, shear force will vary according to positions. Comparing the theoretical and experimental value, the graph obtained also show difference in value. For bending moment at variations of cut due to load and position, the apparatus that we use is an overhang beam like shown in the diagram and then we will use a digital force meter to measure the force exerted at section XX. In this experiment, we will use an overhang beam which the support will be at B and C. Firstly, we will make sure that the digital force meter displays the value of zero. Then, we will place 100 gram of load between point A and point B. And the bending moment at section XX which is point D is measured. Next, we will increase the load to 200 gram and repeat the same. Then, increase the load again to 300 gram and still we will measure the bending moment at section XX. Next, for case 2, we will put the load one by one between point B and point D. Each increase of load, we will measure the bending moment at point D. Then we will repeat the same for case 3 which is the load was placed between point D and point C. The method is, after doing the experiment, we use the collected data of bending moment to plot graph as shown, which is bending moment versus location of load and bending moment versus magnitude of load. Then we will calculate the value of bending moment using equations and compare the measured value of bending moment. Positive and negative moment. When the load W is placed between point B and point C, the bending moment produced will always be positive. This is called as sagging moment. Next, when the load W is placed between A and B, the bending moment produced will always be negative. This is called as hogging moment. Load configurations for absolute equal moment. Theoretically, the aim is to find the bending moment diagram where the maximum sagging moment, which is positive moment, are absolute equal to maximum hogging moment, which is negative moment. By constructing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, the value of both moment are absolute equal. The load needed for this to happen can be calculated using formula derived from shear force diagram and bending moment diagram studies, which is as shown. For calculation, using any values of W, which is forces on A, and D, which is the distance of load P from support at B, we can calculate P by using the formula as shown. Note that for D, it must be less than the distance from B to C. Then, 
we will plot the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the beam. Through calculation and production of shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we can determine that the sagging moment and hogging moment are absolutely equal. This is an example of maximum hogging moment and sagging moment which are absolutely equal. The load W equals to 200 gram is placed at point A and the load P is placed at D equals to 18 mm from point C. The load P is determined using the equation P equals to 65.33 W over D. The value of bending moment and force at section XX is measured and recorded. The experiment is repeated by using W equals to 300 gram, D equals to for a 80 mm and W equals to 300 gram, D equals to 40 mm. Compare the measured bending moment XX with 0 and it should be 0. Apply many points load where each of the loads has the same magnitude, P equals to 200 gram. The point is next to each other with a certain distance. Calculate the uniform load W by using the formula W equals to total of P over D. D equals to the total distance and total of P equals to the summation of these loads. The bending moment at section XX is measured and recorded. The load P equals to 200 gram is placed at D equals to 60 mm to the right from point B. The force at XX and bending moment XXX is measured and recorded. The step 1 and 2 are repeated with the distance of 120 mm, 180 mm and 240 mm from point B. The many points load is applied with each of P equals to 200 as shown. The force at XX and bending moment at XX is measured and recorded. Discuss all the cases whether it obeys superposition principle. The load P equals to 200 gram is placed at D equals to 40 mm from, to the left from point B. The force and the bending moment at section XX is recorded and measured. Step 1 and step 2 are repeated with the distance of D equals to 80 mm from point B and D equals to 120 mm from point B. The many point loss is applied with each P equals to 200 gram as shown. The force at XX and bending moment at XX is measured and recorded. Discuss all the cases whether it obeys superposition principle. For experiment 2, the bending moment versus load graph which is graph 1 it is shown that the bending moment is proportional to the load magnitude for all the cases the graph for experimental and theoretical value are slightly deviated from each other next graph 2 the graph of bending moment versus load positions portrayed that the bending moment is not fixed and will vary according to positions Similarly, the experimental and theoretical value shown significant difference. As we can see from this data, it shows that the measured and calculated shear force at section XX follow the superposition principle. As you can see from this data, it shows that the measured and calculated bending moment at section XX follows the superposition principle.